that happens every morning here at St. Matthew's Hadi. My name is Joanne and on behalf of our vicar, Reverend Komu, and the elders of, of this church, and our youth pastor, Patrick, I'd like to welcome you to another service this morning. Before you welcome the speaker of the day, I'd like us to bow our heads for a short prayer, wherever you are. Um, let's even pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your love, we thank you for your protection, we thank you for your care, we thank you for your love, oh God. We thank you for your providence of Father. We thank you for your care and your grace that you've shown to us every morning up to this point, oh Lord. Wherever we are listening in from, we pray that you're going to just be with our young people and members of this church and even friends who are listening in, oh God. We thank you for this church, for this ministry, oh Father. As we continue to go through this pandemic, oh Father, many churches are going through a tough time. Many people are um, wavering in their faith, Father. But, oh God, I believe, oh God, you're there to stand with them and remind them, Father, that you have this under control, oh Father. As we begin this service this morning, we pray that you speak to us, oh Father, through your servant, Patrick, oh God. And Lord, we pray that our hearts will open up, our minds will be uh, also open to receive from you, oh God. And Father, as we even begin a new week, Father, just go ahead of us, oh God, and strengthen us, keep us safe, keep us um, obedient also to the regulations that are set, and Father will be able to overcome this pandemic by your grace of Father. And I pray all this blessing and trust in you, Christ our Savior. Amen. So our reading for today comes from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 16. I'll be reading from verse 7 through 13. And I read, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks, looks at the heart. Eight. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the, the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. 13 and the last. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. That is the word of God. So at this juncture, I'd like to welcome our pastor, who will be taking us through the sermon and giving us the word. Uh, welcome, Patrick. Uh, wonderful. Uh, we thank God this wonderful day for what he has done unto us. Thank you very much, John, for such a wonderful reading and taking us through uh, the word of God. We thank you very much also for being a wonderful leader in our youth ministry and a pillar in the ministry of God. Uh, good. This day, according to the scripture that has been read to us today, we are just seeing the anointing of David into a new level and appointment to be a king of Israel. And one thing we are seeing, we can learn some three things here. And one of the things is what God looks at. And God is telling Samuel that he does not look at the outside appearance just the way the men look at but he looks at the condition of the heart and when you look at the condition of the heart i want to give you some three major aspects of the condition of the heart that god looks at and one of them is the faithfulness of the heart i don't know how faithful your heart is today and if we can recall when god was calling abraham to go and sacrifice his own son in one of the mountains in moriah as he was climbing the mountain with his son Isaac, 
God was also ascending on the other side with his faithfulness and at the culmination or at the climax or at the apex of the mountain when he was about to sacrifice his son, God provided unto him a lamb that was in the thicket. And today I want to tell you, if you are faithful unto the Lord, we see as the epic uh, scripture that was developed from, uh, by Abraham from that mountain, that in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. The other thing that God looks at is the obedience of the heart. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 23, God you heart without diligence. For out of faith comes the fountain of life, or boils the matters of life. And I want to tell you today, when it comes to the obedience, God sent Samuel to Saul to tell him. And actually this is the major reason as to why God had to change the kingship from Saul to David. Because Saul was disobedient. And when, we, when he sent Samuel to Saul, he, uh, he told Samuel to tell Saul that... The sin of disobedience is like divination. That is chapter 15 and verses 22. And obedience is better than sacrifice. What are we saying today? We need to train our hearts to be obedient unto the word of God. And the Bible says that blessed are those who hear the word of God and do accordingly. Can we be able to act according to what God has called us to do? Can we be able to be obedient unto the word of God? Can we train ourselves to walk according to the ways of God? To follow his attitudes, to follow his laws? Can we be able to do what God calls us to do? And the other thing as far as uh, the condition of heart is called Concerned, God is looking at the devotion of heart. Where does your heart incline? How devoted is your heart? What exasperates your heart? What inspires your heart? What motivates? What captivates? What charges your heart? What brings your heart or makes your heart? And this is the condition of the heart that God looks at. And for one thing that we know, the heart of David was so much devoted to God that even amid his struggles and challenges and all those things, even when he was in the sacred, uh, tending the sheep of his father. David was a worshiper and he was able to praise the Lord in every situation. And I'm praying that for you and I today, we we'll learn how to worship the Lord, that we are going to condition our hearts to be devoted unto the Lord. Praise God. The second thing I want us to look at, our, uh, the second lesson that we can draw from this scripture is God has not forgotten you. When Samuel called Jesse and his son. And Jesse made Eliab to pass by. God told Samuel that I don't look at the outside appearance. I look at the condition of the heart. And he also made the other sons, Abinadab, Shama, and all the rest of the seven sons to pass through until all of them had gone by. And Samuel asked Jesse, are all these your sons? But Jesse told Samuel, no, there is one, the younger one, the rude one, and he is in the field tending the sheep. And Samuel advised Jesse, said for him, for we are not going to sit until he comes here. And because Samuel had already calculated that all the sons of us, Jesse had passed by and none of them had been qualified to be anointed and appointed for the kingship of Israel. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter where you are. God can be able to locate you. God can be able to trace you and locate you in the places that you are. This is the season to trust God all the more. It doesn't matter what you're going through, where you are hidden. Because in this world, I've been telling you, people will scale you, people will rate you, people will hate you. People classify you. But when God comes looking for you, he says he'll make everything beautiful in the due season, in, in the fullness of time. And I know when your time comes, God will come out and elevate you and put you in higher pedestals. So just understand that today you are not forgotten. You'll be remembered. I know most of us may be disturbed because their friends got married before them and they are wondering their time is running out. I won't tell you, you are still in the season of God. God is preparing something better for you. Others are worried because their fellow friends are advancing in businesses. They have been employed as well as they, were, they graduated together. I want to tell you, your season is still coming and God is packaging you for a better future. You are not forgotten. God is coming for you. God is coming to redeem you. God is coming to elevate you. The other thing that we can be able to learn from this scripture 
scripture is something we call staying in the sacred place of the Most High. Psalm 91 and verses 1 says that he who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide by the shadows of the Almighty. And that is what we are saying. Most of the people who are called by God, do you remember Moses when he was studying the fathers in lordship he was in the sacred in the wilderness when Gideon was being called in the threshing floor he was in the sacred we can remember even Jeremiah we can remember people like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego when they were hidden in the sacred place in the furnace that is when God appeared and I want to tell you today for God to be able to call you, you must be redefining yourself and keeping faithfulness in the sacred place. And I want to advise you today, I don't know what you're doing because Corona has come to and repackaged us and hidden us from our friends, from our neighbors, from our colleagues, from our fellow students. But I want to tell you, even in such places, David was practicing and David was singing and that is when God, when God called him, he had already had a witness and he had already had testimony that David can be able to worship him because he was worshiping him in secret. The only witness that saw David killed the bears and lions were the sheep and God. And God was bearing a testimony that David can be able to defend his flock because he was able to defend the flock of his father Jesse. Today, brethren, I want to assure you, whatever you're doing in secret, God is seeing it. May you be faithful unto it and God will elevate you. God will put you in higher pedestals and God is coming to repackage you because the challenges that you're facing in the secret, the things that you're facing in the secret, the situations that you're facing, they are not, to break, they are not meant to break you, but to prepare you for deployment, to make you for greater hate to put you in higher environments and in higher dispensations. May you trust God in secret. And I have seen some of my friends, they are doing a lot of practice in the private places and in the secret places. I don't know whether you are training yourself for new skills. I don't know whether you are doing new readings or, or you are disposing yourself to new horizons. I'm advising you that you be able to train yourself, even if it's some few skills, if through, through YouTube, through the social media. I've seen some people who can be able now to cook differently. I've seen people who can be able to play guitars and pianos, all those things. People who can be able to play games like chess and draft and all this because they are learning this thing and these skills in their sacred places. And when everything reopens, God will have repackaged you for his new environment. And brethren, I want to tell you and assure you that God is still remembering you. God is still with you. God still sees you. And he says in the book of Isaiah that a mother may forget nursing baby, but for him he will never forget you. Just be faithful unto him. And I want to pray with someone. Thank you, Father, for our brothers. Thank you, Father, for our sisters. Whatever they are, whatever they are doing, oh God, I'm praying that your heart will be upon them. May you remember them, oh God. You are seeing what they are going through. May you encourage them, oh Father. May you lift them up, oh God, to higher horizons, oh God. Encourage them, oh Father. Put hope in them, oh God. And may you show you your faithful heart, oh God, upon them. Walk with them, oh God. And I declare that to Jehovah today, oh God, you still say this is the day that the Lord has made. And you still continue rejoicing in you. For we know we don't have another God apart from you all the days of our lives. Thank you, Jehovah, for such an opportunity, God, to interact with you and to experience and to learn from you. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. May God bless you. Shalom. 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 Goodness of God, I'm gonna say.